In recent years, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan has turned into one of America's most important allies. The King of Jordan has proven to be a reliable partner and someone who is committed to protecting our shared security interests. With all of the violence, all of the turmoil in the region, and the accompanying instability and insecurity, the U.S. has made a substantial commitment to strengthening our bilateral relations with the Kingdom. That commitment was reflected in a renewal of our Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with Jordan, which was signed a year ago last week. This new MOU recognizes the importance of Jordan in the fight on the front lines against ISIS and radical fundamentalism, as well as the Kingdom's leadership in taking in over a million refugees from Syria and Iraq. Jordan's resources are already scarce, and with the addition of over one million Syrian and Iraqi refugees, these resources are being strained to the limit, stretched to the limit. That's why it is vital that we help Jordan shore up some of these resources, especially when it comes to the Kingdom's water needs and energy needs. Through our MCC Jordan Compact, a $275 million compact that nears its completion, we have invested in public-private public, public partnership wastewater projects that are now operational and serving over one million people, many of whom are refugees. I had the pleasure of visiting the Samra wastewater plant in 2014 with Mr. Deutsch, and its importance cannot be overstated. I'm also pleased that a local South Florida firm, Hazen & Sawyer, was the engineering firm that managed the project, proof that these MCC compacts and projects can benefit both the U.S. economy and also the host nations. There are other projects, and it is important that we begin to bring them to fruition. One of these will not only be important to alleviate the water shortage in Jordan, but it has the potential to also improve the cooperation and bilateral relations between Israel and Jordan, the Red to Dead Project. Continued U.S. investment in this sort of infrastructure project has enormous upside and can really be a game changer, and it's critical that Congress remains supportive of these efforts. There's also the benefit, the potential for collaborative work between Israel and Jordan and other areas that can be mutually beneficial, especially when it comes to Jordan's energy needs. Jordan signed an agreement with Israel to import natural gas. And again, as with the wastewater project, this agreement has economic benefits for the U.S. as well, with U.S.-based Noble Energy discovering the natural gas field off the coast of Israel and now ready, willing, and able to begin production to help meet the growing natural gas demand in Jordan and elsewhere. And it will be important that we continue to support these efforts and others just like them because Israel and Jordan have shared concerns, shared interests, and it would be mutually beneficial for the two to work closely together. We must also continue to support the good work of USAID, the good work that they're doing to help Jordan in its economy, but also the work it does to strengthen the country's democracy and governance, as well as female empowerment programs. The Jordanian government's commitment to political reform over these past few years has been commendable, and it is clear that our programs have had a good amount of success based on the interest and the support from the government and the Jordanian people. A testament to how this is uh, uh, how this International Republic, Republican Institute, IRI, has been able to expand from working in just a handful of districts when its programs first started in Jordan to now over 30 and seeking to expand further in the coming years. These programs have had successes. We need to build upon the support these programs have received and work with the Kingdom to help strengthen democracy and governance in Jordan and to strengthen civil society. On security, Jordan needs are also substantial because of the Kingdom. The Kingdom has been such a staunch ally in the coalition against ISIS and the stability and security of Jordan are vital if we are ever going to see a secure and stable region. That is why I am pleased that the bill I introduced with Congressman Deutsch 
uh, and as well as uh, Congresswomen uh, Granger and, and Lowy, the U.S. Jordan Defense Cooperation Act has passed Congress just last night and will now make its way to the President's desk. This bill recognizes Jordan's precarious situation and the need for the U.S. to support the King's effort against ISIS. That is why it will allow for expedited sales, expedited sales of certain weapons and ammunition and excess defense articles that the Kingdom needs to secure its borders, to protect its citizens, and to assist the coalition in the fight against ISIS. But as the King reminded us when he visited us last month, we cannot keep a myopic focus on the fight against ISIS and think that it's just in Iraq and in Syria. ISIS is spreading, it is gaining support elsewhere, and it has shown that it has the capability to strike the West as well. The King warned us not to lose sight of the threat that ISIS poses in Africa, where it can gain a lot of support and use a lot of territory for safe havens, and we obviously can't lose sight of the threat ISIS poses to us here in the homeland. This is uh, an obvious threat, that difficult task, but it would be much more difficult uh, were it not for the leadership and the willingness of our ally Jordan to take on this challenge together. I look forward to expanding and strengthening our relationship with the Kingdom of Jordan in the coming months and years, and I thank the King for his steadfast, commi steadfast commitment to the security and stability of the region, and we welcome the Ambassador with us today. Thank you so much. Mr. Deutsch is recognized.